Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for another virtual brown bag. It's so great to see you all tuning in every month. Happy National Napping Day. Um, Don't nap right now. Wait a few minutes after this lecture is over, then grab a pillow, grab a blanket, and have yourself a nice little nap. I'm happy today to welcome Miss Joanne Herbert as our May Brown March Brown Bag speaker. Getting ahead of myself as our March Brown Bag speaker, Miss Herbert has spent her entire career in business, both as a banking executive and now working in the family business of Herbert Homes Inc. and with the property development division of Herbert Homes. Philanthropic work has always been a focus for her. For the last 20 years, she served on numerous charitable boards, including local, state, and nationally recognized nonprofit organizations. Currently, Joanne serves as a mentor for young women on Way program with the Columbia County Chamber. She was awarded the 2020 Businesswoman of the Year for Columbia County. She serves on the advisory board for Security Fiddle or Bank and Evans, the board of directors for the community of the CSRA, and is the 2021 board chair of for women in philanthropy. So she is the perfect person to talk to us today about the philanthropic woman in Augusta's history. Thank you so much for joining us, Miss Herbert. Thank you so much for joining us, audience. I hope you all enjoy. Hello, I'm Joanne Herbert, the 2021 board chair of Women in Philanthropy of the CSRA. I'd like to share with you the history of women in philanthropy and what the organization has done for women and children in the CSRA. During the summer of 2006, the Community Foundation and the United Way headed by Laverne Gold, began a series of meetings to discuss the development of a woman's philanthropy effort. Women in Philanthropy for the CSRA is the result of that meeting. The Community Foundation and the United Way began to host a luncheon to recruit 10 founding members to lead the initiative. Carolyn Mon and Beth Evans served as co-chairs for the new group Founding members agreed to recruit other members. Each gave a $1,000 donation to lead the efforts financially. A board of directors was assembled with goals of recruitment of new members and forming working committees. committees. In March of 2008, a luncheon was held to introduce women in philanthropy to prospective new members Several founders spoke about the power of the purse, and with women, the power of the purse is very important. We were encouraged to become a part of a powerful philanthropic effort through leadership, charity, and advocacy. What began as a dream grew quickly into reality. Today, we have over 200 members, a 17-member board of directors, eight committees, and the foundation of our legacy of giving. A member of women in philanthropy can serve on a committee of their choice. However, serving is not mandatory. A member can be as involved as they choose to be or may only attend social events such as our annual luncheon or our fall forum. Those meetings allow you to hear the grant awards for the year and hear nonprofits speak about their organization. Our committees consist of communications, and that committee um, gives information out to the community about women in philanthropy and also communicates directly with its members. Our education committee does education with our members and nonprofits out in the community. It allows our membership to attend those educational at educational meetings at the foundations themselves so that all the nonprofits have the ability to showcase their organization. Our finance committee, of course, controls our budget and our accounts are held with the community foundation. We have a board a committee of governance. Governance does our bylaws. They make sure that when there is something that needs to be changed with how we do our organization, it must go through their committee and they make the changes. Our grants committee does exactly what it says, it grants. Um, it's a, a numerous hour 
hours and hours and hours of work that goes into being in the grants committee. Um, that committee is the largest committee that we have and it varies from year to year as how many will serve on that committee. Sometimes it's up to 25 members. Our membership committee makes sure that we're um, giving our members um, all that is afforded to them by being a member of Women in Philanthropy and to help gather new members. Special events does exactly what it says. It's special events. Um, that handles anything that we might do with our annual luncheon or our fall forum or any other social events that the Women in Philanthropy may choose to do. Our grants committee is the heart of our organization. They review all grants, discuss each grant, do site visits to get firsthand information about the nonprofits. They spend many hours to make sure women in philanthropy's funds are spent very wisely. We may start with 40 applications at a grant season and may be only able to fund 10 to 12 of those grants. That is due to some not qualifying or the programs don't fit or we just do not have the funding. Um, it's mostly we do not have the funding for every request that's made by a nonprofit. I spent six years on the grants committee and two years as chair. I learned more about our nonprofit community than I could ever imagine. The needs were greater than I ever knew, but the one thing I did know was that I wanted to help do something about the situation with women in our community. The Grants Committee is responsible for producing a ballot that has been fully vetted and mailed to the entire membership for voting. The Grants Committee collects those completed ballots and the nonprofits will be funded and receive their checks at our annual luncheon each year. We have founded nonprofits such as the Augusta Museum of History, Child Enrichment, Hope House, uh, helping women that have addiction to alcohol and drugs to be able to thrive back in the community. Um, Safe Homes, uh, which is also helping women um, that have been affected by domestic violence. Rape Crisis, Kids Restart, the Lydia Project, Augusta Locally Grown. Uh, they have done a wonderful job in providing food for the low income in the community, helping women to learn how to do menus for their families um, and make them have a healthy, healthy balanced meal. Uh, we have done Community in Schools, which is um, a wonderful organization that helps with literacy. And as you know, in our communities here in the CSRA, literacy is a top priority right now. Um, and of course, there are many, many more that we have done. One that we did this past year, which was exciting for us, uh, we gave a grant to the Aiken um, Habitat for Humanity on their wo Women Build project. They chose and vetted a woman uh, in Aiken County that did not have a home. Um, they provided counseling for her to understand how to do a budget, how to take care of a home if you owned one, um, how to figure out how much money you had to have to be sure that you could be successful in owning that home. Um, we were able to help a woman to get into a brand new home. She had to put sweat equity into it as she went through the process. And that was being in the home, whether it's doing construction or painting, um, putting down flooring, sometimes helping with siding, windows, cleaning, all types of things. And her sweat equity went into helping her purchase that home. So they had a single mom with a daughter and it was very exciting to see them to be able to live somewhere with stability. And it was exciting for women in philanthropy to participate in that one. Our vision for the organization is to give hope to every woman and child for their future through collaboration, connection, and community. The purpose of women in philanthropy is to award grants to fund programs and projects 
that have potential for high impact, resulting in significant positive change in the lives of women and children. In Aiken, Burke, Columbia, Edgefield, McDuffie, and Richmond counties. Annual dues paid by the membership of women in philanthropy are collected and given out to nonprofits in the form of grants to be used for the betterment of women and children in our community. Our first grant was given in 2009. There were three awarded for a total of $60,000. Grant requests grew each year, as did the amounts needed, including the granting for 2021, which will be done this month. We will have funded 97 grants for a total of $1,566,000, which goes to show you the power of the purse and collective giving. It is a collective giving that goes a long way and can make the biggest impact on lives. When I decided to join Women in Philanthropy, I knew my money could, could do certain help things for those in need, but putting my money together with like-minded women could complete a project for a nonprofit that my money alone just couldn't do. I was giving a hand up rather than giving a hand out. Our communities have more need now than they have ever had. Um, we, the impact on the community is greater and greater as the times are more and more difficult uh, for us. Women in Philanthropy is an organization that is founded by women to help other women. Membership is afforded to women only. Anyone can give money to women in philanthropy, but women are the only ones that can hold membership. I ask you to consider joining Women in Philanthropy uh, to increase our membership because the more funding we have, the more we can give back to our community. For additional information, you may email us at info at WIPCSRA.org or visit our website at WIPCSRA.org to learn more about our grant funding. You will find by looking at the website, it will give you a lot about what we do, what we stand for, and how you yourself could become a member of Women in Philanthropy. I wish we could have been in person today because it would have been nice to be able to answer some questions that you might have. But a lot of those questions are on the website. But do not hesitate to contact us at the information given to you. Going to the website is probably your best choice. Someone will always get back with you and answer those questions for you in person. I wanna thank you for sharing your time with me today. And remember, collective giving is powerful. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.